Our Gibellini mine located in Nevada is on track for production in the near term as the only vanadium mine in the United States. The Gibellini project has a unique geology in which the vanadium is hosted in a shale. And the shale has been thrusted up from the deep ocean and uh, that thrusting has pre-crushed the ore. It has vanadium associated with manganese oxides and that allows us to process it with a heap leach technology giving us a huge competitive advantage. Uh, over other vanadium types of deposits. While the vanadium demand in the U.S. has grown at a rate of approximately 6% per year over the past 10 years, global demand for vanadium is approximately six times that of the U.S. and growing at a faster rate as emerging economies realize the value of using vanadium alloys and as they develop their own renewable energy economies. The key to American vanadium success in supplying the global market with their high purity vanadium is their straightforward production plan. Mike Doyle, Executive Vice President of Operations, explains. You have a mountain right here, and it's all, it's all ore. To mine it, you just remove the vegetation of the dozer, and, and you're in production. It goes to a heap leach, which will sit right down in the, in the flats. It'll be crushed, agglomerated, and then it'll be loaded onto a heap with a stacker and then we'll use uh, sulfuric acid to leach the vanadium out of the rock, which we'll report to a small processing plant, and then we will uh, process a final product. At the end of the day, we will mine about 20 million tons of vanadium, and 18.4 million of it will end up on the heat, which is incredible. Most other vanadium deposits, the vanadium is tied up in oxides and silicates, and they require roasting and, and leaching, and very in energy-intensive uh, processes. We basically break up the rock, Pull it down to a heap leach pad, sprinkle the sulfuric acid, and recover the vanadium. Our unique geology allows us to produce two clean products on site. One, the vanadium pentoxide flake for the steel industry, and vanadium electrolyte for the mass storage batteries. With an estimated annual output of over 6,000 metric tons of vanadium, the American vanadium properties could supply greater than 25% of America's needs and 4-5% to of the world's usage of vanadium. This makes the Gibellini project a significant global resource. Vanadium truly is a green metal. If you use as little as 0.1 or 0.2% vanadium content in your steel, you actually increase the strength by 50-100%. to and that allows you to use 30% less steel in your structure, yet you maintain its integrity. This means you actually are using less iron ore, less energy, even less steel mills, making not only a cost-effective solution, but you're actually saving the environment. As recently as 2005, a simple change in building codes turned China from the world's largest exporter to a net importer, causing a 450% increase in vanadium prices in less than a year. Any new building designed in China must incorporate grade 3 or 4 rebar, both of which require vanadium. This equates to an additional 27,000 metric tons of vanadium per year demand, an increase of about 40%. China truly understands the value of vanadium and they're making it a core part of their new five-year plan. Currently they use about 0.035% vanadium content amongst all their steel, the world average being about 0.05 and the United States using 0.09. So now with China driving forward to increase their use of that world average, it's going to have a tremendous impact on global world prices. This seemingly subtle change in the building code in China is actually expected to increase the global demand worldwide by up to 40% in already a very tight market. But the need for vanadium reaches far beyond the steel industry. It's also a key piece of the renewable energy movement. Vanadium electrolyte is part of the solution to unleash a massive exponential development in renewable energy. Big problem with renewable energy is wind farms work, but you don't know when the wind's going to blow. So the, the real bottleneck has always been over storage. How do you store electricity in a cost-effective way? So if you produce a lot, you can hang on to it. The electric grid is actually referred to as the world's biggest supply chain without a warehouse. So essentially you're building the grid for peak power. There's a thing called a redox battery. And the redox battery technology has been around for a bit, it's been refined. 
but it needs vanadium electrolyte in order to work. Essentially these are huge vats of, of vanadium and sulfuric acid and what's unique about them is they're fully scalable you can charge discharge instantaneously and do that thousands and thousands of times. So they're going to last over 20 years. From a national security perspective in the United States, they're worried about their grid. They're worried about what happens if part of the grid goes down. The vanadium redox battery resolves those issues. The demand for the mass storage industry could uh, consume up to 100% of the current uh, global vanadium supply. Everybody thinks of vanadium as, as an industrial metal stock, but I know where its future is and it's as a green tech stock. It's kind of nice when you're involved with a project that the president refers to directly when he talks about vanadium redox batteries and technology that's being developed in the United States in order to achieve those objectives. Having demonstrated that we can actually produce vanadium electrolyte as part of our process and being the only vanadium mine in the United States, this presents a real critical strategic opportunity for the company and the United States government is fully aware of this. American vanadium, the critical element.